going on guys today i'm going to show you how i prepare a very simple zero carb carnivore meal of beef ribs so that's really all we're having today i know you guys are used to seeing me consuming liver salmon roe various nutrient dense foods every day but this is something that's a bit more approachable and easier for a lot of people so here we just have uh, a piece of grass-fed uh, rib it has a lot of fat on it and the rib section uh, this part of it at least is actually one of the parts that our indigenous ancestors would have consumed as it's where the animal naturally stores fat it's predisposed to having very high deposits of fat in this area of the animal so you know it would have definitely been a food that we would have been able to consume unlike ground beef unlike ribeye steaks it definitely falls in line with eating nose to tail in a way and all i'm going to do here is i'm just going to separate the ribs so it's easier to put them on the grill as you can see you know there's plenty of fat on these ribs even though they are grass fed doesn't matter if it's 25 degrees outside or 95 degrees outside generally i am grilling my meat over a fire so what i do here is i take some hardwood and i just put it in my gas grill let me show you guys the setup on the bottom on top of the burners are some old grates so i laid those grates on top of the burners and then i can lay wood on top and then when i light the gas the wood uh, becomes ignited very quickly so it only takes me about three or four minutes to heat the grill up to this extent Having, having this level of flame and amount of heat makes it very, very quick and easy to get a sear on any cut of meat. So all I really do, I chop up the logs, let the grill warm up for a few minutes. Then I can literally brown these ribs within a minute or two. And then I can either finish them on the grill or throw them in the oven to get the temperature I want. But, you know, I'm sure you guys are used to, you know, spending... 10, 15, 20 minutes warming up your grill, getting the charcoal started. To me, this is the easiest and the quickest way. And not only that, cooking over a wood fire is one of the best tasting ways to prepare your meat. So I'm gonna turn the gas off. So I'm gonna leave these for maybe like three to four minutes, come back outside, flip them, and then uh, give it another few minutes and we should be ready to eat. Normally I do eat my meat on the very rare side towards blue, but since this meat just came out of the fridge, I don't really feel like eating cold meat, so I gotta leave it for a few extra minutes on the grill. Take these off the fire, nice and charred. This is so good. I didn't even put anything on this. No salt. Okay, so here I got some salt. Took a couple bites out of this already for the thumbnail, but if we look at the temperature on this, it's raw, pretty much raw. And you know, e even these tougher cuts of meat, I find that if you keep them at a very lightly cooked temperature, they're still very tender and easy to eat. You just put a bunch of salt on it. So the nice thing about these cuts like brisket and short ribs is not only that they're affordable, they have excellent fat to protein ratios where if I buy something like this or brisket, I know that I'm not going to be searching for an extra source of fat where if I bought steaks or ground beef sometimes, I'm usually trying to find a high quality source of fat in addition to the lean protein. But what are we actually achieving by only consuming muscle meat and fat in this meal? Since we do have high quality grass fed beef, 
although indicating by the color of the fat and the taste, it might not be the highest quality grass-fed beef. We can assume there's a reasonable amount of the precursors to EPA and DHA in here in the form of the alpha linoleic and alpha linolenic acids. So by sourcing grass-fed beef, we are increasing that amount, you know, by about four to five times, at least that's safe to say. Definitely more vitamin A, more vitamin E, a higher vitamin K2 content in the fat. And overall, you know, less omega-6 fats as well. Better, better fat ratio. You know, obviously we have protein, we have fat, we have cholesterol, we have minerals that are needed to absorb certain vitamins. And uh, not only that, I think this would have actually been pretty close to a meal that our indigenous ancestors would have consumed from just a nourishment perspective in regards to getting in a lot of calories in a compact amount that's also very, very tasty and uh, nutrient dense. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys would like to support the channel, please subscribe and share the video. If you guys are interested in the salt, uh, I got it for, I think it's like $8 on Amazon. It's one of the best salts I've had. So you can check out my Amazon shop in the description for that. If you guys are interested in my cosmetic products, uh, I do have them available on my website, frank stefanocom under the shop tab. I'm actually wearing my hair pomade today. And although I haven't made it as a product yet in the future seeing how things go maybe uh, we'll start doing the hair pomade uh, if you guys want to check out my twitter instagram i'm on social media uh, if you guys would like to reach out to me for one-on-one -on -one consultations in regards to anything from food sourcing to nutrient density you can send me an email frank at gmail.com or reach out to me through the contact form on my website if you guys do have any questions about this you know where i got it feel free to ask it in the description uh, there are a few little uh secrets here and there and other things I do throughout my day that you might have observed in other videos although I did not show them to you in this video but feel free to check out my other days of eating my day in the life and that will kind of answer any questions you might have about every single thing I do throughout the day.